Welcome. You have tuned in to In the Know with the Bullioness. I'm Dawn Marie, a Silver Level Associate and Top Recruiter at 7K Metals. Join me in welcoming to the show my return guest and knowledge decipherer, A.G. Leveraged. A.G., welcome to the show. Hi, Dawn. How are you today? I am doing awesome. So glad you could take some time out of your busy day to share some words of wisdom with us. Today's topic is we're going to talk a little bit about the biggest reasons why baby boomers and millennials should be stacking silver and gold. So let's get started. So do you believe in your opinion that millennials are ready for the coming change in the economics in America? I'm going to start this, Don, by saying that I have enormous respect for millennials and for baby boomers. I work with baby boomers in my industry. As I've said before, I'm a builder, and a lot of my clients and friends are, I happen to be Generation X, but I have clients and friends that are all three, millennials, Xers, and baby boomers. And and, and let me specify, millennials in this case, we're talking about people that are young adults that are between the ages of 20 to 35 approximately. So having said that I respect for all of them, the question is how will these different groups fare during a potential coming recession as early as 2020? Again, we hope that isn't the case. We hope things can get turned around, but should that not be able to to write, should that ship not be righted and, and a recession does come, how will these varied groups uh, fare? Millennials between 20 and 35 have a few things that are going against them. And in this case, I'm going to specify four things that I see that are, that are going to be standing in their way. One is they have a big amount of college debt. A lot of them have done what they were supposed to do, and they did what society has told them, what the parents have told them, what we parents have told them, which is go get a, go get a college education. And they've done so. And they've come out with a lot of uh, a lot of loans, a lot of college loans. Even among those 20 to 35 year olds that have gotten a great job and a great career, and they're making fifty thousand dollars starting off, because they do not own a home and they do not own any private things, they usually are paying about ten thousand dollars in taxes, which means that that fifty thousand dollars translates into about thirty three hundred dollars a month, and after their car and their apartment rents and their utilities, et cetera, et cetera, they're not left with much. So that means that they're overburdened with debt. So education is one of, the, one of their biggest challenges. A second challenge that I believe they have is lack of money knowledge, lack of investments. Now, whereas the baby boomers of yesterday were able, of yesterday were able to invest in the stock market, and and CDs and mutual funds and yield a very good return, millennials are at a big disadvantage because we're, we're going into a moment in time where there's going to be very low yields, very low returns, very low dividends paid on anything, if anything at all. As we've said in previous interviews, we're, we're going into a moment where companies are over leveraged, where they're heavily indebted. And so there will be little return, if any, at all. So lack of, of, of money, of how to invest and how to save and, and where to spend. A lot of times the same group of, of, of kids, they go ahead and spend money on things that uh, don't ultimately matter. Um, and I'm not picking on this group. Like I said, I have a lot of respect for this group because a lot of these folks are they're very hard workers and they're friends of mine as well. Um, a third thing that I think might stand in their way, and this also comes through schooling, is a lot of times a lot of these younger kids are, they come up saying that they're pro-socialism, not really knowing, not having any life experience in that type of economy. Uh, We live in America where now we have Cuban Americans who fled Cuba because of socialism. We have Venezuelans here who, who, who fled Venezuela because of socialism. We have a lot of folks that have fled their mother countries because of socialism, because of the, the hardships of, of that economic uh, model that has never worked. And so unfortunately, our education system at the academic level is telling these young adults that they should vote pro-socialism, and, and that's going to hurt them in the end. Um, 
And the fourth thing is this group of, of Americans is at 71 million right now versus the baby boomers that are 74 million approximately. This will, by 2020, the, the millennials will be the biggest group in America. It'll be our largest population in our labor force. And a lot of times the same group of folks have gotten degrees, bachelors in psychology, philosophy, sociology, history, uh, a variety of, 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 uh, of academic liberal arts degrees that do not translate into any sellable skills out in, uh, out in our society. And so how can they be expected to get a job that's going to pay them well if they have a degree in something that is not a sought-after skill set at that moment? Uh, in fact, this group tends to lean more towards an academic bachelor's as opposed to a vocational skill set. In this new moment in time, as this recession potentially uh, nears, as it nears us, there's, it's the vocational uh, skill set that's going to be sought after more. It's the vocational, whether it's the mechanic or the plumber or the roofer or the carpenter, the electrician, anyone with actual skill sets that will be able to, to continue. So those are the four things that I see that are going to be hurting this group as we move forward into a recession. So isn't that um, a flip? So in the future, those that are saddled with college debt to get their academic um, careers going may actually be doing worse than those that did not have the opportunity to go to college and chose or not chose were only able to fall into vocational and they're thriving. Is that what I'm hearing you say? That, that, that is what that is what's coming in, in this recession, and I'm going to add to that, Don. Unless someone took their bachelor's and then they went on with their master's and they achieved their doctorate in psychology where they're now a doctor or in, or in any uh, liberal arts program and they become a philosopher or they become a, uh, an academic and a professor or they become a writer or they start doing lectures, naturally all of those fare well. Those are very professional jobs. Those are very uh, professional sought-after careers. Uh, a person could work for the government uh, within, or for a university or at the private level for any of those. However, someone who went after a liberal, art, liberal arts program and they stopped at a bachelor's, those are the folks that are going to have a challenge out in the workforce. So it sounds to me that just like the words of wisdom Robert Kiyosaki talks with um, diversification in your career, he talks about, um, I know that when I was in the career doing the corporate, um, doing my corporate work, I always felt bad that I was leapfrogging, that I would just, I never went to college, did not have that opportunity, and so just worked myself up through corporate. And every few years, I would, um, there would be a different opportunity from a completely, in, in the same line, um, but a completely different industry. And I remember um, human resources always try to make me feel bad that I had not stayed with a certain company long enough, yada, yada. And then I remember listening or reading Robert Kiyosaki's book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, that just talks about how those that learn a whole bunch of different skill sets, you learn accounting, you learn sales, you learn um, maybe a little legal or human resources or whatever it is, that's just a corporate industry. But you learn a lot about different things. Then when you want to be that entrepreneur and start your own business, you know all those different things versus someone that's like just specialized in one of these academic careers or in their case, he had mentioned an astronaut. If there is a layoff, then you have nothing to fall back on. So I think that's really important to understand that um, even if you have the opportunity to go to college and maybe you don't go as far as what you had mentioned, maybe have a secondary, right? Definitely. Yes, yes, yes. A secondary skill set. Yes. Excellent. Okay, now what about the baby boomers? We talked about the millennials, but how are the baby boomers going to fare? So the baby boomers are 55 years or older, and so naturally this group is of retirement age. They're either getting ready to retire or they're retired. So this group is relying on Social Security, on a pension, or a 401k, on deferred comp, 
maybe they're, they've been depending on dividends uh, from stocks or CDs or mutual funds, or they've been depending on any kind of yield from a savings that they have. So here I see three issues with this group. The first one is they're retired. And a lot of times when someone exits the, work, the workplace, the workforce, once they retire, that's it. Um, they don't typically return back to work um, unless they're forced to. In this case, for this group, I would strongly suggest anyone in this group to not retire, even if they're of retirement age, even if they put in their 30 years. I'm going to suggest that whoever is working right now in this moment in time, do not retire, do not quit. If anything, follow the strategy you just mentioned, which is get another job on the side, uh, open up your skill sets, be open to another potential cash flow opportunity on the side, uh, get some kind of side gig beyond what a person does. So I'm suggesting keep your job and get a second job is what I'm saying. So that, that's the first issue I see there for the baby boomers. The second would be health issues. Uh, this group is going to be facing uh, physical challenges on their health. And so in that, the question begs, well, how much time, how much energy are they going to have to work, whether it's that original job they're at or potentially picking up a second job? Um, th that's going to be their, their, their second situation. The third, and this is something you and I have talked about several times now, is we're transitioning from a moment when – uh, once upon a time, a person was able to put a million dollars in the bank, and I'm talking about the 80s, and they could yield 10%, which means that they could get back $100,000 from the bank per year for every million dollars that they put away. And, and this particular group of people, they're used to that level of mindset. Now, naturally, a bank now returns less than 1%, the average uh, investment, unless they're going to do a long-term $25,000 or more investment it's still only it's still only going to be I think a little over one percent, maybe one and a quarter percent, something like that. So, so now this group has to learn to get used to smaller yields. The days of six, seven, eight, nine, ten percent returns are gone. So they're going to have to modify their lives, and that that includes travel, that includes eating out, that includes living well. Most of these folks have lived a lifetime, they've worked a lifetime, they've dedicated themselves to some kind of profession, and now they want to live out their retirement years in a comfortable manner. And if this recession comes the way that you and I have spoken about in the past, then they're going to have to make some very big modifications to their lives in order to, to, to go through this as successfully as one can during a recession. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. I was so excited about some of the things you were saying. Um, uh, I started making sure it was on my website, and that is <clears throat> when we were talking about the whole side gig thing, everybody is looking for a side gig. Everybody is doing Uber right now, becoming an Uber driver on the side or uh, doing Airbnb, this or that, just to make ends meet. And whether they're millennials or they're baby boomers, they're doing it. And so uh, what I'm excited about is just sharing that one of the best industries that's growing that you'll never become obsolete in is network marketing. And I won't go into the long spiel on network marketing, but it is a passion of mine that I've just learned in the last few years. And it's something that it doesn't matter what your skill set is. It doesn't matter what your age, your background, your education, and none of it. And it is also an industry that women excel. In fact, over 82% of women that make over six figures do it in network marketing. And the reason I just mentioned this is because on this YouTube channel, if you scroll down after listening to this interview, there's a section called Reasons Why You Should Join 7K Metals. And in that playlist at the bottom is a must-see documentary. And it talks about how to become a successful entrepreneur. It's going to give you all the facts and figures. It's a, done by a third um, third party, so it has nothing to do with 7K Metals, but it's going to explain why network marketing is the way of the future because of all the networking that we do as social media and so forth. 
and it's just brilliant. And um, so uh, what I wanted to share with you, uh, obviously, is we believe that out of all the – oh, what I wanted to also mention is that when you say the word network marketing, most people have a sour taste in their mouth. Most people have had some sort of trauma especially during that first generation of network marketing that came out, there was a lot of strongholds over promises trying to saddle you up with a whole bunch of product. There's a term in the network marketing um, industry called garage qualified, and I'm sure somebody, uh, all of you know somebody that is garage qualified with something where they've got a ton of products in their garage that they can't unload. And um, and then the qualifiers with the first generation was way too high. People weren't making any money. So they're, they got lots of product, and they're not making any money. And so um, both AG uh, Leveraged and myself have partnered with 7K Metals, and we're excited about it because they've flipped both industries upside down. The network marketing industry, they've shifted the qualifiers, they've shifted everything so that everybody – the average person can make a significant income. And then secondly, they've shifted and flipped upside down the precious metals industry, cutting out all layers of middlemen. So what's beautiful about this is you have a side gig, you have a product you can believe in that you'd be excited to have be garage qualified over, that it's going to be easy for you to earn an income, an extra income, sharing the product with people that has a universal mass appeal. And I forgot the final point, but it's just really cool. So forgive me for hijacking the show there. <laughs> Wanted to put that little plug in. <laughs> just a little plug. Don't get me excited. <laughs> Don't give me a reason to give them a solution, right? So, yeah, I love it. Okay, well, let's close then in your tip of the day. Let's leave on a high note with what we discussed about the biggest reasons for boomers and millennials to stack some silver and gold. What would be your tip of the day? My tip of the day is this, whether, whether the person is a millennial, whether they're a Gen Xer like myself, whether they're a baby boomer. We have to watch how we spend now more than ever. We should only buy those things that we absolutely need. We should only make expenditures on things that are of value. At this moment in time, does it, is it significant to buy a new car? No. Is it significant to go buy and lease a brand new car? No. Is the boat and the sea dues and all these other things, are they absolutely essential if we have high credit card debts, if we have outstanding loans? The answer is no. What makes the most sense right now is that if we're a homeowner or if we're a credit card owner or if we're a debt owner, we want to pay those down as much as we can between now and when things begin to slow down. So the tip of the day is value the money that you have while you have it. Spend it wisely and with the difference by precious metals that you stack in your own possession through 7K metals. That's it. And, and see it as is, you know, at least we have the foresight that things could be changing. If we're wrong, it's going to be even better for us. But if things are shifting from feast to, you know, not so much feast, then just prepare ahead of time. And, you know, it may sound like it sucks, but I think in the future you'll be so happy you did. Right, A.G.? Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Again, I know that your schedule is full, and we are just so grateful for every moment that you could give us with the words of wisdom that you share. So thank you also for those that are listening. And again, we really appreciate your support. Do share these videos, these audios, these YouTubes with others to help spread the word. And be sure to subscribe to our channel. Would love to hear your feedback. Leave a comment below, whether it's a feedback on this show or what you'd like to hear in the future. And most importantly, if you like what you hear and you'd like to learn a little bit more about 7K Metals, please go to silverpreparedness.com. 
That's silverpreparedness.com, and that is going directly to AJ Leverage's site, so you would be part of his team and gain um, all his mentorship with that. And that is a, a, a gold mine in and, of, in and of itself. So until our next session and next segment, have a fabulous day.